has has countless you know top eight top fours and wins to himself yeah, he's a national champion he's an ecc top four placer as well uh also known for innovate uh, innovating and trying out new yeah. things and again he's no stranger to it today yeah. in fact the, the, the man on the hot streak as well of course yeah the the last ever uk national champion actually smell eternal <laughs> yeah <laughs> because uh, today we're replacing international championships so yeah it's going to be an incredible match I actually we do have the deck lists uh, here so we have a quick look at those don't want to talk about them too much just yet obviously the players haven't got their headsets on yet so we don't want to give anything away but uh, we'll obviously tell you a bit more about uh, their decks once the people once they've got their headsets on yeah of course that's going to be important for us but as we say both veterans of the game both already doing well so far in this tournament and it becomes inevitable at this point in the game where you're both at very respectable records you're going to start clashing with some of the best so far in the first couple of rounds we've been lucky to feature some you know heavy hitters facing off against each other but it becomes a point where you're only facing the very best of the players and let's face it if you want to win the tournament you have to go through some of these big names if you want to end up on that very very high record and get your way into day two and it just becomes inevitability at this point well i mean big names are big names for a reason right you don't become <laughs> a big name just you know out of, a, out of a luck of the draw you know you have to have the results back it up and uh, yeah it means that more likely they'll be doing that same those same good results as they progress, so it's gonna, yeah, gonna be a hard time making it all the way up there yourself, especially if you're not used to the, that high level of play. And now that both players got the headsets on, we can confirm that Jimmy is playing. Looks to be Pikachu, Zekrom with Zapdos. Yeah, and this uh, hybrid build sort of. Yeah, it's one of these decks that's really been popular out in droves uh, mm -hmm. this weekend. It's kind of the hybridized build where you have a couple Jirachis, a couple, well, very high Jirachi actually. He's playing four yeah. copies. Those couple of Zapdos with Rescue Stretcher, so you can play the non. GX game if you have to, but when it's time to go all in, you throw the chips down, Pikachu and Zekron comes in, Dance of the Ancients, uh, Thunderous Mountain, all these combinations can really get him out of nowhere and uh, take big knockouts as well. Surprisingly enough, this is a matchup that Tamao um, is going to be comfortable with, and it's one of the things that he's very aware of when playing the Rayquaza GX base build that he is going for. Um, he's really just anticipating to see these sorts of uh, tag team base builds and hope that the damage output from a Rayquaza is going to be enough. Yeah, very much, very much so. And uh, for for Tamao, I mean, we were, we were talking to some of the uh, some of the folks playing this deck yesterday and straight zap those without speaking to Zekrom. That's a really, really tough matchup because obviously it's very hard to price efficiently with that. But, you know, against this build, if uh, Tamao can just run uh, Jimmy out of zap doses, you know, maybe force him to you know, burn the rest of the stretcher and then force him to eventually put down a huge to Zekrom. And by that point, he's built up enough energy to take him one hit knockout. That's how Tamao's going to win this game. Yeah, it's more often than not that Jimmy will run out of non-jectors at some point, yeah. and that's what Tamao's hoping to capitalize on and maybe use the tankiness of early Rayquaza GX against these Zapdos to buy himself a turn or two, yeah. at least keep up with the race, and then start to win it when he has that huge amount of energy in play, and uh, then tries to make big pushes against the GXs that Jimmy is inevitably going to have to use at some point. Yeah, because, I mean, all Tamao needs is four energy on the field, and he's able to KO Zapdoses with... Uh, with the attack, so it's going to be not going to be too difficult for him to build up that enough that amount of energy to take to start taking knockouts and to start that price trade going in his favor. Whereas Jimmy's going to have a lot harder time doing one hit, one -hit knockouts on Tamao's Rayquazas. And when you're on Jimmy's side of the table, it's down to him to try and make it as difficult as possible. Let Zapdos take one hit goes as often as possible. Use as many stellar wishes as you can to build towards Electro Powers. Maybe some big Zapdos knockouts on a Rayquaza could be a big trade for him here and there. Yeah. Obviously, they're not playing Shrine of Punishment because they're so focused on GXs. Yeah. That's one way to pull these uh, Rayquazas into range a lot easier. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be down to him to find a bunch of Choice Bands, Electro Powers, all in one combination if he yeah. wants to get these big non-GX swings. But oh my goodness, what an awful start. <laughs> Jimmy, both Zapdos that he plays in his prize cards. It's going to be a non. It's going to be a full GX slaughter this this uh, game one. Oh my goodness, <laughs> that's really really rough. One key non GX on Tamal's side is prize though his uh, Prism Star Shaman. But uh, that, on, by on balance, I think he takes that. I yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Jimmy's. If I don't. Right, it looks like Tamal's going first. But um, once Jimmy flips over. Uh, his cards. And once he goes first, as he takes his turn and starts looking through his deck, he's not going to be happy when he sees what he sees. We see Tamao kick off with the Tapu Koko Prism Star. Jimmy thinks he knows what he's up against, but he's about to find out differently as we do see the Mysterious Treasure to kick off Tamao's turn. Yep. Getting a Lightning Energy into the discard pile is always great for you. He's eyeing up a Let Loose Martial at the very least this turn, so he can start looking towards getting some Rayquaza GX developed and maybe end his turn on something like a Let Loose and yeah. see what happens from there. Yeah, so... 
I mean, in theory, very, very unlikely, but playing that Mysterious Treasure, you, know, you might use it in a Zapdos build to get Unknown Mouth Shadow or something. Even though no one really plays it, it, it could be potential, but that takes all the doubt out of the equation. There's the Rayquaza that it goes down. And so after, yeah, after that, um, Jimmy will know exactly what he's up against. <laughs> and yeah. he's going to, well, he's going to think, yeah, I guess I'm fine. I'll just you know, lead off with my Zapdoses and just force him to take single prize knockouts. But he's going to look through his deck and he's going to <laughs> realize he's in a spot of bother. We're going to see the first Stormy wins here. Tamal still looking for more energy cards. If they can hit the discard pile, that's still beneficial for him. He's going to have to get rid of one Guzma alongside that. But overall, he hits an energy. That's good news for him. He yep. can get a second attachment for turn here onto his Rayquaza and simply let loosing. Pretty powerful stuff, especially when Jimmy doesn't lead off with a Jirachi. Yeah. Normally, this deck can have a nice little safeguard if they're able to have a Jirachi in play. Here to Mao just saying, well, these five cards better be good, Jimmy. Yeah. Otherwise, this Rayquaza is coming for you. Yeah, exactly. Not a bad start at all from Tamal. Very happy there. Got, got the attacker. Almost ready, set up, ready to go, and yeah, like you, like you said, just cutting Jimmy down to a lower hand size with a suboptimal starter, meaning that he's g going to need more than perhaps you would usually to draw himself out of this. And of course, still supporters on the table for Tamau if he's able to draw into them. Looks like uh, just a couple basic Pokemon. Shining Genesect is actually one non GX attacking option that he has in his deck for these situations when he sees opposing Zapdos players. Shining Genesect can move energies onto him with his energy reload ability, so he's quite easy to get powered up um, and he just is a, li a little bit annoying and tanky with yeah. 130 base hit points. Yeah, good. Um, Zapdos got to put in a little bit more work than usual to KO us at what would be a single prize attacker. Looks like Jimmy does draw an Ultra Ball off that Marshadow, so yeah, you're not bad at all. He's going to be happy to see that and going to look through and I'm just waiting for the reaction, <laughs> Joe. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to see here. He's going to go ahead and look towards maybe some Jirachis, maybe a Tapu Lele as well, a potentially safer option if it is in his deck. But yeah, when he finds out there are no Zapdos here at all, there's going to be some sort of reaction, I yeah. imagine. This is uh, very awkward stuff for him. As soon as you start seeing GXs, Jimmy's going to be looking towards early Zapdos pressure. And uh, he that's just not an option. Relying on one stellar wish here. That's all he has. He just pitched his uh, let loose Marshadow. So he's basically just saying, instead of giving myself a random four cards, I'm giving myself a random five instead. Yeah. And hoping to hit a supporter card. He's currently holding Switch and a skateboard as his only two options. So oh goodness, very yes. very awkward for him. This stellar wish is basically make or break for Jimmy from this opening hand here. Uh, Tamal's let loose really has made life awkward for Jimmy yeah, from the offset. Important to know he's not actually playing Tapu Lele yeah. so yeah, that's not even an option. Like you said, he just discarded his uh, Marshadow and uh, he didn't go for the other one, although or is it in his prizes? I don't believe it was in the prize cards. All I saw was Zapdos. Oh, it blinded me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, same, same, same here. But Big stellar wish. Let's yeah. see it. And Tamal making sure that it's <laughs> sleeping and not paralyzed. Yeah. We appreciate that. It doesn't look like this is a porter car for Jimmy. This is horrible. Oh, it's yeah. just a mysterious treasure. I mean, uh, we're could, hoping that the other Marshall was in the deck here. Yeah, I yeah think it, it is. It, it must be surely. I'm fairly sure I saw it before. Yep. Yeah, there it is. So he, he does fail safe. Goes for the let loose. But he's already burnt one switch and one uh, a skateboard having to hit the discard pile for this mysterious treasure now. So really not ideal. It's very unlikely for him to get any sort of knockout here. It would have to require a crazy combination. Jimmy, of course, does still have his supporter open to him, though. So who knows? This could get him into a big lily, a Dance of the Ancients, a Thunderous Mountain. There's still combos potentially here for him, but it's just not the rocketing start he was hoping for. No, no, very much not. And I mean, any kind of supporter here would be would be good for him because I mean that that was horrendous. We were saying before, oh, he's got the ultra ball, he's fine. But actually, considering every, all the other circumstances, it just might not be enough. Big four cards here. What does he get? Let's see. It. Is there going to be a supporter card in here at the very least? I there think is. I see a That's something. Okay, I thought that was a Guzma for a second. I thought that would have been horrendous. <laughs> but no, he does have the Cynthia, so he is slightly bailed out here. He will have a chance to see even more cards. He's a lightning energy as well, but not really anything that great to attach it to right now. Nothing all that playable. The only real upside of attaching would be to guarantee it so that you have energy switching options, but yeah. it doesn't sound that strong. So he's instead going to forego attaching this turn and just go for the Cynthia and try and get himself a fresh six here. Um, not bad. I mean, it's kind of survival from the let loose. I've seen worse ones where you're just ending up stranded, especially when uh, Jimmy's Jirachi is looking very fragile next turn. Yeah, that, I, I've been there. I know you yeah. have as well. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes that can happen. It looks like Cynthia's at least something here to Jimmy to work with here, looking for some basic Pokemon to get energies onto here, because currently on the board, no real viable attackers for him. Yeah, yeah there you go. Six cards. And 
I mean, with, with the fact that the Zapdos is going down, I mean, do you do you even do you just concede they have to start attaching to Pikachu Zekrom and start going like that, or do you even just consider powering up a Tapu Koko and the Prism Star and attacking with that? It feels way too slow. I think he's going to need the help of the Prism Star to actually get him towards attacks. Yeah. That's why we're seeing the Pikachu and Zekrom tag team get benched here. Yeah. I mean, if he could do a turn one full blitz, that might be one way to... <laughs> get, I mean, we have seen it happen already today, yeah. so it's clearly clearly possible. But I don't think he has it right now. Yeah, I don't think his hand quite gets in there. It looks like he's just going to get a Nest Ball to sort of replenish the Jirachi that he's expecting will be going down next turn. Yeah. Uh, just to give him a ways into a new supporter, because I think his hand is basically just a lot of energies right now and a Tapu Koko Prism Star. So yeah, he's going to need help from Stellar Wish again next turn. Yeah, he's not quite, not going to quite do the job. He would need like Thunder Mountain or Energy Switch or something like that to get himself all the way there. So instead, going to have to be content with passing. And yeah, Tamau's going to be pretty happy about that. So Tamau's going to need some sort of combination of like finding his Zero Aura GX and an Energy Switch. Or maybe he can move his Tapu Koko Prism to the bench and get it um, using its Dance of the Ancients and then getting your Rayquaza back into the active in some other, may, uh, other means as well. He could get a Stormy Winds plus Turn 1 Attachment plus Dance of the Ancients onto a brand new Rayquaza, for example, as well. This deck has many ways of bursting out energy cards, and yeah. we're going to start off with another Stormy Winds here. Another, another energy hit as well is really good. Another Lightning in Discard Pile that goes straight onto the Rayquaza GX. Ooh, Tamau supporterless though. It Ooh. looks like the let loose has worked out for Jimmy here. Yeah, it has. He's got himself Ouch. the Wishful Baton. He's got himself the Naganadel, but just a Viridian Forest. So he's going to have to end up passing here after a very speedy start. And Jimmy having to read Wishful Baton? Yeah, it looks like it. Just make sure that you know what's happening. Yeah. Uh, why not? There's no reason to not look at it if it's just going to refresh your memory. It's not an often used card. Yeah, no, I guess not. that's true. It's seen play throughout the uh, weeks and months, yeah. but never all that standard. Yeah. Jimmy just going to refresh his memory there. Yeah, another Stellar Wish. Uh, I, do I, it's hard to see whether he's got support from that or not. Uh, I don't... Yes, there's a Lily there. So a Lily, but there's also a guaranteed switching card. He mm. could have like guaranteed himself a full blitz if he wanted to here, but it looks like he's trying to prepare his hand even more so than just being content with just a switch. Yeah, which is... Uh, I, I mean, it's debatable either way because obviously with the full blitz you get a prize card and so you know that would have been if you have that ready available then obviously you have the attack follow up for next turn as well so you could have that see you through but at the same time if you're just drawing more cards it's pretty good so it's, uh, it's, it's a bit contentious either way I think I think Jimmy's hoping more than anything to find himself another Pokemon that he can use full blitz onto it feels a little bit risky going towards your Pikachu and Zekrom but potentially it's a play he will be making this turn depending on what he draws into yeah. on this Lily can he get himself a backup Pikachu and Zekrom or is he just going to have to put three energies onto the active I think one sort of hidden trick that Tamau has up his sleeve is that he plays his own Tapu Koko GX so he can just use yes. these energies that are on the raise right now everything looks safe and Jimmy seems out of range right now but if there's a Tapu Koko GX that can just steal all those energies from the Rayquaza with Aero Trail it can take a big knockout on a Pikachu and Zekrom. So Jimmy does have to tread carefully here. Yeah, then that's important to consider. Of course, we did see uh, earlier on today, you know, Stefan swooping in with that Tapu Koko GX just to take the win out of nowhere against the Zaya. And uh, I'm sure Jimmy doesn't want to be on the receiving end of that. <laughs> yeah, it's always a bad feeling when you've put all your eggs into one basket and then it just gets taken out all in one hit. Very awkward. All your prizes, all your energy, all gone in one yeah. foul swoop. So yeah. Jimmy's going to take things slow, grab a switch, and then Stella wish for another one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a bit unfortunate there. Kind of just burns the switch for no reason, essentially. Although, yeah, it's, it's interesting to see what he actually, he actually has to pass. Yeah, I feel I like this the most. He's got a Guzma in his hand now for next turn. He's hoping that Tamau's hand is just not getting him anywhere. He saw how weak it was last turn. Yeah. He's just hoping that that's going to help him, you know, target down some of these Rayquazas and just make sure he's taking only two prize knockouts every turn. Yeah. It doesn't feel great just taking a full blitz straight into a Coco Prism Star because, you know, it's only one prize and it's not going to get you much further. Jimmy's going to set up his hand a lot more and just um, sort of hedge that Tamau's hand remains weak and yeah. he can capitalize on that. Uh, Jimmy also has to pick up and read Shiny Genesect, of course, again, another card that's not very seen. You've seen even less often than Wishful Battle, and we're not really yeah, seen that's that, true. We're not really seen that played much since uh, you know, the, the Venusaur Shining Genesect deck was, uh, For sure. was around uh, briefly. There's the Radiant Forest player played down. That, that was the thing that discarded the Shining Genesect, of course. Grabs the Lightning Energy from the deck. He will be able to, of course, use that to retreat the Tapu Koko in the active. I feel like he might just be spreading energies around the board. Tamal can see that there's a full blitz on its way. Maybe he just wants to spread energies around. Or also onto the safe Wishful Baton target is also fair, seeing as though he's just hoping that there are no field blowers. Very often not the case in 
uh, these sorts of decks. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's evolved the wrong time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Marsh Hadder does not evolve into the Cannonell, unfortunately. It's, uh, but he does have the Poipol there, so it's all good. Yeah, he can uh, get plenty of lightning energy. That's the only real thing that's going for him. Tamao's basically one top deck away from a big Tapu Koko GX at any time. Yeah, so very much so. He's kind of like backed into a corner, but still dangerous at the same time here. So Jimmy still has to be careful, even though Tamao's really not done much over the last couple of turns. Let Loose really has punished him here. Yeah, no, that's the thing, of course, because uh, the Tapu Koko G the GX attack, it doesn't matter where the energies are in the field are. You know, Even if uh, Jimmy spreads them out, I mean, it'll still be doing enough to one... Sh if he gets all the energy from the full blitz, it'll still be enough to one shot the Pikachu Zekrom. It'll be interesting to see how Jimmy tries to play around this. He's fortunately, because of this slower approach, he's not had to use his Dance of the Ancients at all. So he may just not choose to take any energies from the full blitz and just say that he's got enough reload potential from his own Dance of the Ancients later down the line. Makes sense, right? And not only that, but he's taking away Tamao's option for Dance of the Ancients mm -hmm. as well because he's been forced to sort of leave the Tapu Koko active, not wanting to, the Rayquazas to take any hits, and so he won't be able to get use out of that Tapu Koko Prism Star at all. Jimmy able to pick up an Ultra Ball from this Stellar Wish. This might make him go aggressive, though. It gives him the option to find himself a second Pikachu and Zekrom tag team. It does. And start powering up that, so, you know... Tamao has zero cards in hand. Let's not forget that right now. <laughs> He's living on a prayer. Um, and if Jimmy just goes all out aggressive and finds himself another Pikachu and Zekrom, you know, which he has just done, he could win in like two turns if uh, Tamao just draws blanks. Wow, yeah. And also, not only that, but of course, the we saw that he had, he discarded an Electro Power with the Ultra Ball, but he has got Choice Band in hand. So he did full blitz for 180 here and actually get a knockout on one of the Rayquazas with that Guzma in his hand. So it's going to be a really, really strong turn for Jimmy, actually. Yeah, it was the patient approach that seems to be so smart now that we've seen how weak Tamao's hand was. He had the card read, Jimmy, after seeing Tamao only make a couple of actions two turns ago. Yeah. And he's said, you know, if I've got time, that's great. I'm just going to use it to my full advantage and... Uh, get the most out of this Pikachu and Zekrom as I can. He is still going to target down the Rayquaza GX that does have the Wishful Baton. Um, so at least Tamao will be able to replenish these energies. Um, and, you know, he already has five on board. Um, it, it is interesting because obviously targeting this one means that none of the energies go away, but at the same time it means that, uh, you know, the, all the energies have to go into one Pokemon, which means that then at that point, you know, next time the knockout's taken, if Tamal can't find another Wishful Baton, mm -hmm. then all four energy go off, and even if he does, at least one energy will be guaranteed to get to fall off. Jimmy's going to go ahead and go for this Dance of the Ancients. That probably just tells me that he's going to be benching his second Pikachu and Zekrom this turn, yes. and maybe even full blitzing to it, because he's got four energy on the field now, and he might even just go over the edge and put even more onto this board. Mm -hmm. He could even just go all to the active here. It sounds a lot riskier. But if your opponent has no hand, but yeah, we are going to see the second Pikachu and Zekrom hit the field. Jimmy still has a bunch of his energy switches available to him. And he's not even attached this turn, so he can yep. actually just attach from hand as well. That tells you that he's getting as many energies onto this board as he possibly can. Yeah, because at this point he's already committed to, you know, the fact that Tapu Koko will take a one shot. I think he feels like by taking the KO here, he's far ahead enough that it actually just doesn't matter. And boy, is he far ahead. Tamao just hoping that this one card can get him, well, what do we need at this point? A Lily or a Cynthia? Yeah. America's Hospitality, maybe? A a anything, really. I mean, Those are his only outs, it seems. Yeah. A Tempest GX won't really help. He's too far behind at this yeah. point. Yeah, it'll be, be, be way too slow if that's what he was forced to do. Big top, big top deck here. What do you draw? He can turn anything into an energy. It we know that much, yeah. but he wants anything but energy at this point. That is... Oh, what, what was that? Well... He's given us a little flash of yeah. <laughs> whatever it was. It may be a rescue stretcher if he's looking straight at his discard pile. Uh, come on, Tamal, show us. Be, be kind. Maybe in scoop mode. It, oh, Guzma. So, so it is a supporter, but not quite the one we wanted. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Over. Is it worth him trying to take a cheap prize? That doesn't feel like he'll ever win a race if that's going to be no. played. Nothing really easy for him to stall either because the Viridian Forest is in play. So Tamal instead is going to be... Getting rid of this Guzma for a Viridian Forest just for more energy cards here. Yeah, it, You know, it, it's funny. I've actually I've talked to Tamao uh, a little bit before sort of uh, about how his general mindset is when it comes to approaching games. And he says that something he does honestly sometimes struggle with is conceding games because he will see what is potentially a small out to win and just sort of want to want to carry on even if it seems like it seems quite small. And that's, imagine the mindset that he's sort of experiencing <laughs> here because... Maybe he sees the sort of potential out and he wants to just play it out one more turn before he decides to move on to the next game. But that could be the difference between a winner, winner or a tie. 
I mean, that's definitely true. But Tamao just trying to do his best here. He'll be ending his turn most likely on a GX attack here. But he's also eyeing up how many energy he has in play. He currently has six in play, uh, which is doing 180 damage. And it looks like he's reaching for the damage counters, so he's just going to swing here, trying to two-hit KO this Pikachu and Zekrom. It is interesting because, I mean, in theory, Jimmy can't really do uh, Tag Bolt GX this turn. Well, he can, but not for the you know, full effect of doing 170 on the bench as well. He'd have to be content with just taking a knockout on the active with uh, Full Blitz. Um, but granted, this still, <laughs> still just puts him in a really good position. But yeah, I'm kind of surprised he didn't go for the Tempest there because he... Kind of doing 180 damage doesn't really help ridiculously. I think Tamal is basically just saying that Tempesting here is just losing slower. He think he right, okay. he's just too far behind in the prize race if that's going to be the case. He's just going to say, I'll guarantee this two-hit knockout. Jimmy's going to go ahead and put all the energy on the back here. And yeah, and Tamal then does indeed scoop. Yeah. And uh, you can't blame him, really. Uh, well. Let Loose really just slowed him down completely. Uh, and supporterless. That, and, and that's the power of Marshadow. You know, yeah. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes you end up drawing really well and your opponent doesn't, but sometimes it falls the other way around. And, I mean, you know, at that time it was uh, Jimmy's Marshadow that really put a dent in what Tamal could do. And because of that, Jimmy was able to just run away with the game, to be honest, is the best way to describe that, how that panned out. It's very interesting. Tamal started off on all cylinders, really. Rayquaza down, two energies, a wishful baton, his own Let Loose. When Jimmy j just started an ace, uh, sorry, an Absol, and uh, it was down to Jimmy to use that one stellar wish that got him into another let loose, which yeah. got him into a Cynthia, which got him slowly, slowly back into this game, and was able to manually attach uh, a couple times to a Pikachu and Zekrom that eventually just was never answered by Tamau, thanks to you know the awkward hand that he was dealt with. Yeah, absolutely, and it's uh, because of that Jimmy was able to win. We are moving on to game two. Tamau will be going first, obviously, because he did lose the lose the first game, so that will bode well for him. He'll have uh, an extra turn to you know, get down his poi pulls and uh, he'll be able to get out his the, the Ganadels quite quickly. But you know, it's hard to contend with you know, a deck that's just all basic attackers. I mean, this is one of the age old conundrums that we've seen in Pokemon formats past, where you know you have you know, the you have the basic focus attacking decks, you have the stage ones and the stage twos, and normally it's like a trade off between sort of power and consistency. But when you have something like Pikachu and Zekrom, which is not only a basic, but has an absurd amount of HP and an insanely powerful attack. I mean, it's kind of hard to <laughs> argue against that. And that's what's seeming to be rising to the top of the tables this weekend. I mean, it's just proving that it's got power in spades. Mm -hmm. There is the big disadvantage of giving up three prize cards, so you have to play him carefully. You could see Jimmy was basically tiptoeing for a couple of yeah. turns where he could have been in real danger, but he just used his time effectively and was able to yeah. eventually crawl over the line with that Pikachu and Zekrom that then just goes crazy as soon as yeah. it starts swinging with full blitz. And not only that, let's not forget, at the beginning, Jimmy had prized to Zapdos. We'd uh -huh. like almost like written him out of the game before <laughs> he even started, and yet you know he was just able, off that marsh out of like they said, to make this humongous swing and just uh, able to win the game. Well, guess what? It's another story of Let Loose. Tamau yeah. just attaches to his Shining Genesect, slaps the Wishful Baton on, and hey, it's <laughs> time to Let Loose. This time, though, Jimmy does already have a Jirachi in his active position, so it's a lot more comfortable this time for him. I think that's another really important factor to remember. Of course, we've seen Marshadow be a very important part of the format either pretty much more recently, not straight away when it came out, but sort of it's kind of hard. It's kind of really only really with the World Championships last year where Marshadow really really picked up. I think because some people were playing it before then, but now especially you see it in so many different decks, and it's become a real powerhouse of a card. But if you're playing a deck with Jirachi in, you're a lot less vulnerable to it because mm -hmm. it's a lot easier to get yourself out of it when you look at the top five cards of your deck. I think that's basically the theory behind both players' deck lists. They can utilize Marshadow a lot better than any other deck because Tamau has four Rayquaza that can sit in the active and use Tempest to reload, and Jimmy has the uh, Jirachi that can get him out of these awkward hands. So mm -hmm. from a four-card hand, you're actually looking at nine cards to get you out of a bad spot. So yeah, exactly. Tamau's able to... It looks like a Mysterious Treasure away one of his Rayquazas. He's got a Poipol, a Rescue Stretcher in his hand as well if he wants to reload this uh, Rayquaza. So it looks like his hand is reasonable. I believe there's a supporter in there as well. Otherwise, we would have inevitably seen him go for a Tapu Lele here, I have to imagine. Yeah, yeah, of course. He also plays two Marshadow as well if he wanted to give himself a second chance. Let's just spin, spin the wheel again. Yeah, it tells me that either they're both prized or that there's a Lily coming here. Yeah, there it is. He's interestingly holding on to the Rescue Stretcher rather than going for an early Rayquaza. There's no energy currently in a discard pile. 
Yeah. So uh, he's not content to take the risk with the Rayquaza. He's looking to find some more maybe discarding cards before stretching back for a Stormy Winds play. Yeah, sort of thinking he wants to evaluate whether it's actually, you know, he can guarantee himself the energy before going for that. Now there goes... Gotta go to Tapu Koko GX. Uh, not your GX, even just the Koko mm -hmm. Prism Star. Uh, the Rescue Stretcher, he does opt to play it now, and yeah, just does get the Ray back. Yeah, it might just be going in blind here, hoping that the top three cards has an energy in it, and so far, no. Ooh, oh! It's a big miss from him. A couple Guzmas hitting the discard pile early, as well as one of his Lilies as well. That is extremely ugly discard there from that Stormy Winds. That is exactly what you don't want to see. Yeah, he. Uh, that's why he was holding the Rescue Stretcher initially. He was yeah. like, well, I don't like my chances of hitting energy here, so we'll wait and see if my hand can get me anywhere better. Yeah. And it looks like uh, Jimmy's uh, paralyzed his uh, Jirachi again. <laughs> He's it the wrong way. <laughs> well... It's found himself a uh, Cynthia, so he's very happy. It looked like he just had a hand of energy before that. Yeah, so. it was literally like through energy and, and uh, the escape board. Um, yeah, it actually, uh, important for, for everyone watching at home, an important w a way to remember it, the way I, I like to do it, is sleep has, no, paralysis has an R in it, so paralysis is always to the right, whereas sleep doesn't. That's the, if you're trying to remember which way around to paralysis and sleep are, that's the way to go about it. Yeah, very simple rule, always effective, and... Uh, Jimmy needs to learn it, I think. Yeah, yeah. I hope so. <laughs> maybe, maybe we should. Maybe I'll uh, go go tell him after the match. Let's see how this Cynthia can treat him. Looking unlikely for him to take any single prize this turn, unless there's a crazy combination of electro powers or a big Pikachu and Zekrom coming out of nowhere. But currently, again, his hand is just back into a bunch of energy cards. He has another Stellar Wish available. He could just be content with a Zapdos hitting for 80, but it's just a hand of lots of energy all over again. This is pretty awkward for him. Yeah, it is. Uh, I mean, the saving grace is that he has two Jirachis to work with, so you know you can just start digging through more cards, and eventually he will, you know, like you see himself uh, with a way out, especially now that uh, he does have access to Zapdos, although he's just going to go straight for the Pikachu Zekrom, it looks like. Yeah, it might be that he just retreats into his other Jirachi Stellar Wishes, attaches to his Pikachu and Zekrom, and is playing the sort of uh, game of chicken with now to see how quickly he can find himself Guzmas alongside all these other energy uh, sort of cards yeah. that he can burst onto the field. I think the real help for Jimmy right now, the time that he has, is because Rayquaza doesn't currently have any energies on yeah. it at all. You're only being threatened by a Shining Genesect, and that's not too much of a worry right now. No, exactly. And that's an important thing to sort of remember with, with Pikachu Zekrom is that although obviously Rayquaza has this capability to take one hit knockouts on the, on the Pikachu Zekrom once it builds up enough energy, the Pikachu Zekrom uh, is able to get to there a lot more quickly. And it's an ugly Stellar Wish for Jimmy. He was really hoping to find some draw supporters for next turn. Instead, he's going to have to be content with a switch here. Uh, he is holding on to Rescue Stretcher, so he may be thinking of going for the double Stellar Wish plan again next turn if he keeps firing into blanks. So he's just giving himself these extra reload opportunities, trying to use a Stellar Wish as often as possible. will give you the highest odds of getting yourself out of this funk. But right now, he can just attach and pass it over to Tamau here. Yeah. Yeah, and, and obviously that seems like a bit of a slow start, but again, all it takes is one energy and then something like a Thunder Mountain or, you know, with Tapu Koko, and all of a sudden, with a choice band, he's doing a one-shot on a Rayquaza, so he can get to these, like I mentioned before, these one-hit knockouts a lot quicker than Tamau can. Absolutely. It's just it's just that, obviously, when Tamau gets one-hit knockouts, he takes three prizes. Yeah, it's kind of like they're both sort of crouching tiger decks where yeah. they can just burst anything out, and it depends on what your opponent's hand is. Sometimes there's a lot of mental uh, strategy going on here as well. You've got to think about what your opponent's capable of and then how likely they are to be able to do it. We're going to see Tamau here. He's going to attach a lightning energy for turn just so that he can have a low enough hand size for an Erica here. Lightning energy not too helpful, but you can still uh, knock out Jirachis at least with your Shining Genesect. If he was able to draw into some sort of discarding card for a Grass Energy for a Naganadel, he could have done a Charging Up plus Energy Reload play. I think that's yeah. what he was looking towards, but no dice there. He may end up just passing it back over and hoping that the Wishful Baton does its work. Yeah, and that is a Tails on the Sleep Flip for Jimmy, so he does need to find an Escape Board here, otherwise he won't be able to retreat. Although, I know, actually has a Switch in hand, doesn't yeah. he? So, no, it doesn't even matter. And I still think he's missing out on draw supporters by the looks of things. <laughs> These Stellar Wishes are not treating him the best. And uh, not, although he does have a Guzma in his hand. Yeah. Or rather in that option. And he has an Electro Power too. So, and one option could be to maybe take the Guzma, bring up the Ray, switch into the Jirachi, hope to find a Choice Band or a Plus Power. Uh, sorry, Plus Power, Choice Band or, or an Electro Power. And then actually attach and... Has he got me? I don't think he has a means of getting the Dance of the Ancients off just yet. I think in his oh, discard okay. pile, it's just a Nest Ball and a Cynthia so far. Oh, okay, He's okay. Also no. missing out on that 
little component so far. And yeah, he's not got Thunder Mountain in his hand either. Yeah, oh, okay. exactly. Right, so in that case, yeah, it makes more sense to go for the safe option, just to get the escape board, make it so that both Jirachis can retreat easily. Yeah, that's all he's after, really. He may still end up just using the switch this turn rather than the escape board. Uh, both options are available right now. Yeah, he's just going to switch. Yep, case in point. Not a stellar wish. He keeps turning it the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> and it keeps doing the wrong thing for him as well. Yeah, He's exactly. Finding any draw supporters. But here's an Ultra Ball. This is going to be great for him because there's a couple lightning energies. You always like to see those into the discard pile. Yeah, you do. And that means actually he could do four blitz this turn if he wanted to because he could obviously Ultra Ball for the Tapu Coco and then attach manually. This pretty much indicates that instead he's going for a let loose. Yeah, he's yeah, instead looking for supporters to get himself again out of this hand. It's taken a lot of stellar wishing. He's still not quite got there, but now he can let loose to try and get some in, uh, into some draw supporters. Yeah, interesting how he opted not to bench the Absol there, thinking to himself it's not really as useful in this matchup, and may as well just keep it in the deck. Although there is one extra card that he could draw, which isn't a draw supporter, so could have been a contentious argument either way. Yeah, I think bench space is surprisingly tight, really, for Jimmy's build. He's playing four Jirachi. He's also playing um, a couple of Marshadows. So you do end up clogging your board quite often with some of these just ability basics that aren't really attackers. So keeping the options open for more Pikachu and Zekroms, more Zapdos, and even Zero Aura sometimes can chip in. Yeah, uh, Those are things to bear in mind. So he's kept those options available. But Again, the horrendous draw, really. Yeah. Like a, a Lightning Energy, a Switch, Wobbuffet, and then... Well, I'm not sure what that last card is in his hand. Is that? Oh, another Pikachu and Zekrom. Pikachu and Zekrom. I think he's just going to be retreating into his Marshadow again and just thinking, well, man, Tamau, I really hope you don't find ways to goose me now because yeah. this is going to start getting very awkward. Well, I mean, he said that even if he... Even if he does get a Guzman, I mean, what's he doing to this Pikachu Zekrom? He's like, he's barely even, like... Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a combination of cards, really. He's barely even tickling it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, play does pass two to Mao now, and he's picked himself up a Viridian Forest. He can start getting Lightning Energies into the discard pile for his own Tapu Koko Prism Star at this point, if he wishes. Looks like there's also some ball search going on for him as well, which is a lot better than last time, at the very least. And it's like he will be able to find himself at the Naganadel off of this, and that is indeed what he grabs. Now, I don't believe he has any NG in his discard pile currently. He's uh, Otherwise, he probably would have been able to do something earlier. But he's actually not... It looks like he's not 100% sure. He could get an NG in the discard pile with the Viridian Forest and Lightning in his hand. Because he could just obviously discard that and grab another one. But his options don't look great. Let Loose has done him again. It's just a hand of uh, energy switch, energy, Viridian Forest, which is effectively an energy. Yeah. <laughs> so that is one of the issues of having a deck that is playing, you know... I think it's like 13 or 14 energies total. Yeah. And then you're playing Naganadils to get energies back, Wishful Batons to get energies, energy switches to move energies. It's <laughs> you know, So much of your deck is focused on literally just these energy cards that are basically just one a turn. You yeah. know? And you're, not, um, you're, you're not, not doing much else with them. And the Shining Genesect is just stuck in the active, really hard to retreat. It's not really doing much of anything at all. He mm. can obviously use the Viridian Forest, Scud Lightning, and grab a Grass if he wants to. He can actually start attacking with this uh, Shining Genesect. That would be enough for a KO on the Marshadow, actually. Yes, yeah. He could take the KO. He could do the sort of painful retreat and attach to the Rayquaza and go for a Tempest if he's not content to sit on that hand of essentially like zero cards, really. There's a yeah. couple in there, but none of them are all that helpful. Um, but I think, I think more often than not, you want to get this Wishful Baton value. You yeah. want to take the one prize because this is where your damage output comes from. It's costing too much for you to pay retreat in this spot. Yeah, exactly. I think that if we're not for the Wishful Baton, I think it would be perhaps a little bit more debatable. But with, with it there, I think it makes definitely makes the most sense. Just attach to the active, take the knockout, and hope that uh, Jimmy doesn't have a good, uh, good enough response. We are going to see a Stormy Winds now, guaranteed to hit energy cards. And he hits a few more. Wow, Whoa. that's amazing. That's dodging bullets of, you know, potentially three dead draws for yeah. Tamao. That's amazing for him. That's yeah, so, so much better. About as, about as ideal as Stormy Winds he could have asked for. Really, really good for him. Because, uh, yeah, now he can just do Dance of the Ancients as well. This he definitely helps out. He hit a couple of Lightning Energies, so a couple of Rayquazas are starting to get stacked here. The damage output starting to look pretty dangerous at this point. It really is. And it's a shame. I mean, Ultima needs now is a, is a Guzma. He could potentially have a really, really cool turn. Not quite enough still to KO Pikachu Zekrom. He would need two more energy on the field, as well as the one he's going to attach now to do that. But still, really, really solid. So now I'm going to go for an energy switch here, move it onto the more safe Rayquaza that already has a Wishful Baton, yep. and uh, take the individual prize. And once again, down to a zero-card hand, let's see if he can uh, 
pick up a good prize card here. Just a rescue stretcher immediately. He starts looking <laughs> through his discard pile to see if there's any help here. Yeah, and I don't think there is, unfortunately. No, no, not looking ideal for him. So again, he's in top deck mode yep. as of right now as Jimmy kicks off his turn with that Viridian Forest. He's going to pitch his Wobbuffet Prism. Uh, Tamal, fortunately, was able to dance to the Ancients just before that came into play. It's not, it's not Prism. The Tapu Koko Prism stuff? No, no, you say you pitched the Wobbuffet Prism. It's oh, sorry, it, my it, bad. It stops Prism. It stops the Prism. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's, not, it's not a Prism itself. He's going to go ahead and grab himself a Lightning Energy instead. Yes, he is. And so he's so got an energy switch, got a Pikachu Zekrom tag team in hand, just goes to the Stellar Wish. Finally finds himself a drawing supporter. Yeah. A spot where he may have wanted a Guzma instead here, to be honest. Hitting into these non-GXs never really helps you in your prize race too much, especially when Tamao has a uh, Wishful Baton already attached and you know there's already a lot of energy on his uh, dis uh, sorry in the back already. Yeah, and, so. and, es and especially when the thing you're attacking with, if it gets knocked out, gives up free prize cards. Yeah, and uh, that's really awkward for him. He does indeed end up taking the Lily, I think, by the looks of things. But, yeah, Jimmy's really looking for different options at this point because he can't just start swinging into a non-GX with uh, too much comfort right now. Yeah, that would potentially end disastrously. He has got a switch, though, so he has got one more chance to find himself a Guzma, potentially. Actually, just goes to the energy switch, and, oh, no, he's just going to Lily first. Yeah, he's going to lower his hand size to and draw that fresh six cards. Maybe he's once again just saying, Tamau, you have a one-card hand and one draw for turn. Don't have Guzma, please. Yeah, <laughs> that would be ideal. Yeah, I really like how Jimmy's taken these hedges. He's just saying, yeah, Tamau's working off nothing. He doesn't know what he's got in his hand and uh, doesn't have Stellar Wish to fall back on, so why don't I just sit here and wait for my own Guzmas? Yeah, I mean, I mean <laughs> the thing is, obviously... Uh, Tamao can just respond with a knockout of his own, and then he's uh, two, two prizes sure. ahead, and then it forces uh, Jimmy to find a Guzma, potentially. Uh, Stella Wish finds a Nest Ball, and Nest Ball finds another Jirachi. So we're just going all out here, trying to get as much value out of these Jirachis as possible. And actually, he can, because he used the Switch, he can just retreat and do a third Stella Wish mm -hmm. if he wants to. Yeah, I think that's what he's doing. He's making sure he has Stella Wish as often as he can every single turn. When he's not taking these knockouts, may as well pull an extra card out of your deck, look for more resources for next turn again look eyeing up things like guzma to make sure he's only ever taking two prize knockouts it's pretty much the only thing on jimmy's mind really yeah definitely the case and then another one he's also holding on to another switch oh field blow is a tech card that jimmy plays and it's right off the top and he's like well that's what i've been looking for this whole time <laughs> i'll take that immediately and now we're even gonna look at the other four <laughs> now we can see both wishful batons hit the discard pile jimmy is oh. holding on to a switch and now full blitz looks a lot more appealing wow that is yeah that, that turns full blitz from a kind of yeah, sort of yeah move to <laughs> well okay actually this is a massive game swinger and yeah free energy from Tamau's side gone, and all of a sudden the Rayquaza is looking a lot less uh, of a threat in terms of a revenge knockout. So Tamau looking for a top deck of a Tapu Koko GX or any draw supporter. Yeah. Tapu Koko GX would be devastatingly powerful here. What any draw supporter would help, but of course it's another energy. That's not what you want, really. Uh, so I think, yeah, there's any real players to maybe, you know... Do, I mean, do you even use Rescue Stretcher? You attach a Lightning to something. Um, or you could... Oh, actually, just going to discard and yeah, grab a Grass. That so makes sense, because then any energy he draws from now on will work out for attaching to the Rayquaza on the bench. But no, it just grab, grabs on the Lightning. I think he's always keeping the option for that Tapu Koko available to him, mm -hmm. just making sure that if either Rayquaza gets knocked out, he'll still have like a way of getting towards that Tapu Koko. Right. That's probably what he's looking for. Of course, that makes sense. Yeah. But, yeah, he's been working off nothing this whole time. Never really had the time to go for a Tempest GX. No. Um, he's going to have to do it now. With, yeah. And uh, now he's going to have to begrudgingly go for that sort of play. He may even... Yeah, I mean, it's no, really that's thing, the rescue stretcher can't do much. Also, that's the thing. If you go to Tempest, you can't use Tapu Koko, of course. I mean, you can use, Aero, you can use the your Sky High Claws, but you can't use, uh, you can't use the yeah. GX attack. So, actually, maybe he just wants to do 120. Yeah. It looks like that's all he's got right now. 120 damage coming on to Jimmy's Pikachu and Zekrom tag team. Yikes. Jimmy with six energies in play. The option to tag Bolt. Let's see if he can uh, keep full blitzing as well. That's another option for him. I mean... But his board looks so intimidating uh, from Tamal's side now. Yeah. Uh, he's got... He's got the choice band in it. Oh, no, that's an energy switch. We've got Mysterious Treasure discarding the Marshadow. Going to look through to see what he has. Not going to grab anything from that. 
plays the rescue stretcher for no, just to, to <laughs> get these back in the deck. Yep. It's a pretty interesting shout from him. I think he's trying to lower his hand size for a lily by the looks of things. Yeah, that makes sense. Because, I mean, if he finds a choice band or an electro power off of this, then full blitz just becomes a very obvious play, mm -hmm. and that would be very, very good for him. Tag Bolt is fine. I mean, you're still taking two prizes and still going far, far ahead of Tamau with yeah. only a couple energies left on his field. And basically, you know how well Tamau's doing. You judge him based on how many energies are in play. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And taking another three away from him. Jimmy playing that field blow, which is really uncommon it's in these Zapdos variants, yeah. is a huge tech. I, wouldn't, I would not be surprised. Match up. Oh my goodness, Jimmy's got it all already. He's got himself the Thunder Mountain. He can energy switch and attach. We're going to see a big Tag Bolt GX here. It can knock out not only the active Rayquaza, but also the Poi Pole if he wants to. And that's going to be incredible for Jimmy. Who needs to full blitz the active when you can just, you know, full blitz the bench and then still do the Tag Bolt with the extra damage next turn? Absolutely incredible scenes. This is why people love playing the Pikachu and Zekrom tag team deck. You can have insane turns like this one we're about to see where Jimmy can take three prize cards. And, wow, I mean, he's got another backup attacker on the bench already that's got, you know, a couple energies to go. It's got the Dance of the Ancients available to him. Like, there's nothing nothing awkward about Jimmy's board yeah. at all now. And now, now we're in the almost absurd situation where even if Tamau gets a huge swing knockout with the Tapu Koko GX, it actually just doesn't matter. Yeah, I don't see how Tamau's getting there, but even if he did, Jimmy's got an almost instant answer. Yeah, that that, that is... Absolutely obscene. And yeah, the Dance of the Ancients, the other, the other Pichu Zekrom's ready to go with a Choice Band too. And uh, benching his Zapdos just for good measure. And then... With a Guzma in hand for next turn as well. He's yep. completely set for everything he wants. And Tamau has basically nothing going for him here. Yeah, Tag Bolt GX with the extra energy. Uh, and of course, they did attack cost reduction from the Fundamentals and able to do the extra 170 to the bench. So knock out on the active Rayquaza, knock out on to that Poi Paul and... Yeah, what does Tamau do? He extends the hand, that's what he does. Found himself an energy switch off the top, and that's not doing anyone any good. No. <laughs> that's uh, a story of two um, let looses, really, to see Jimmy go 2-0 here. Let loose was much kinder to Jimmy than it was to Tamau. Obviously, Jimmy having those stellar wishes at his side as well after the let loose. Yeah. You're able to just accumulate your own hand size, even off of a low count. And Tamau was just sort of scrambling for options. And we also saw the field blower. That was, let's make no mistake, a big, big deal. The turn he got it was a huge swing. Yes, Tamau was building towards, you know, six energy already on the field. One Naganadel, one Stormy Winds, one Attachment, or one Dance of the Ancients. He could have found a combination to get there. Um, it never happened. Pikachu and Zekrom in one turn. But the field blower at the perfect time yeah. just leaves Tamau's board with nothing. Yeah, it was that, that one sort of out that you had. You know, maybe he's the energy survived from the Wishful Baton and he can to get some kind of your revenge knockout there. But no, the field blower tech coming in clutch and Jimmy really sealing that game for Jimmy there I think is uh, the best way to put it. I think it's a really great shout from Jimmy to be honest. I mean there's always going to be value somewhere for Field Blower. Yeah. Obviously you're an aggressive archetype that's trying to be as fast as possible so you're sort of taking out maybe a speed card or your own like extra switching card for a non-consistency card but the payoffs can be huge. We've seen um, Wishful Baton in a couple of decks today. Uh, there's always going to be an escape board for you to uh, use your Field Blower on. You can contest the stadium war even more. We saw Jimmy using that Thunder Mountain. Opening up that Thunder Mountain for as many turns as possible gives you immense value so Field Blowering opposing stadiums early to sort of free up that space for the Thunder Mountain to come later down the line, force the opponents to put more stadiums yeah. into play. Always going to be great news for you. So the Field Blower, pretty great tech card for Jimmy there. Yeah, it really, really was. It was uh, great to sort of see that in use. So there you go, J Jimmy looking to continue his completely, you know, dominant run over this uh, the previous Pokemon season. You know, now up to five wins, no losses, no ties. <laughs> pretty pretty hard position to argue against, isn't it? Yeah, he's in dominant spot right now with a deck that he knows inside and out. He's sort of made his own tweaks on the deck. We've seen, you know, sometimes zero Jirachi in the Pikachu and Zekrom tag team base builds. We've sort of seen that count kept creeping up and up and up. And now he's basically got the shell of a Zapdos deck, mm -hmm. but with some heavy hitters in the back. Yeah, and uh, that's really why I think one of the reasons why this hybrid build of you know, Pikachu Zekrom with Zapdos has taken off so much because you can just adapt to the matchup as you see fit. You know, if you need to just take some early quick swings of Zapdos and just you know, try and knock things out with you know, one price attackers, you can do that. If you need to take a bigger swing, take a bigger risk perhaps, but with a huge payoff for the Pikachu Zekrom, you can do that as well. You have these options available to you. And having the option to do one or the other is usually something that a lot of the really best Pokemon decks share. Yeah, and it just gives you options. Options every single turn and mm -hmm. your stellar wishes